So I wasn't familiar with this person before someone asked me to take a look at her. And I, I think her name is pronounced Selena Quintanilla. She's from Texas and is of Mexican heritage. And uh, the face, to me, it looks like an oval-shaped face, tending much more toward female than male. It's got a kind of uh, small female eye shape. Um, not that all females have small eyes, but typically females do have slightly smaller eyes than males, appearance-wise anyway. Um, the dental arch is wide, and she does have a, a wide-looking mouth overall. But, given that she has Hispanic blood, um, people from that region often do have wider mouths and uh, some traits that are also more closely related to people from Africa as well. So sometimes people with Spanish blood will have some similar traits to those with African blood as well. Um, so the wide mouth actually is not strange for a Hispanic woman. The collarbones, they look very delicate. You can't really see any bones jutting out like you typically would see on a male that has a low body weight. It does look like there's a shoulder slope here as well. Let's look at the crotch level to the arm level. Um, it's definitely at the palm height or hand height, not at the wrist height, so the arms are female length. The shoulders do appear to be sloped as well. And it's not that there's built up muscle because this person looks quite soft. Again, it's not what someone who has maybe Irish or German ancestry, it's not the same kind of body type. But this is a totally normal Latina body type. Um, you know, she's got that proper female waist indentation and this belt thing is cinching it in a little bit more. But she also does have uh, wide hips that begin at a higher height than you often see on the MTFs because uh, they just can't get the shape right, but that indicates that there are actually wide pelvic bones in here. It's not just body contouring, putting fat there. Very importantly as well as there's definitely a, a an acute Q angle, so a very female Q angle. Definite, uh, definite curve to the thigh bones here. So the overall shape here does look very female, and if you take a look at where the widest point of the... Uh, thigh bone connects in with the pelvis here. It's definitely, well actually looks like it's a bit wider than where the shoulder bone, the joint is right up here. So these dimensions are looking essentially female. Same here, you know, the definite sloping shoulders, the proper female shape here with hips that begin at a high point where the female waist begins, and then also the female Q angle and uh, distribution of natural fat along the thighs there. Looks very normal to me. Same here. It's a very voluptuous figure. This is obviously, <laughs> obviously female legs. It's, you know, definitely small female rib cage as well. It does look like the kind of short female arms with delicate joints, small hands. You know, this isn't one of those people we see with the, with the male looking uh, powerful muscular legs. It just looks like female legs. Knees look very female too. Again, the hands look quite small and delicate, female. The small rib cage again. The arms look suitably short. And the knees look kind of... Female knees kind of are more uh, rounded and pointed like this, whereas male knees often have a bit more of a square kind of look. Definite like this, this shape to the lower leg. This is just very, very obviously female legs. There's some fat retained around the face as well, which is very common and is very normal on women, even uh, thin women like this. And there's no jutting bones on the face, you know, there's no brow ridge here, there's no squareness anywhere, it's just a fairly strong facial structure, but it's a female facial structure. Again, the full lips, the wide mouth, that's, that's a thing related to heritage, that doesn't indicate that she's male. There's a curve to the upper back here, and you can see that there's a curve uh, at the lower back here, around to the posterior. This is definitely a female body. I think we've just got a female digit ratio here. It's always hard to tell if the hand is ever bending at all, but, you know, worth a mention. And the actual size of the hands, if you took that hand and put it up here, yeah, I, I reckon it would reach around here not up to here. If it reached here, it would be a male-sized hand, 
but if it reached here with the palm running along the edge of the jaw, it'd be a female hand, a female-sized hand on a female skull. This head could not go three times on these shoulders, so they are definitely narrow enough, female shoulders. Again, the delicate bone structure, you don't have any bones jutting out and looking strong and male here. There's nothing strange in the trachea. Um, yeah, the, the structure of the bones is actually sloped in the shoulders too. You can tell that the waist dentation up here is above the navel, which is typical for females. The curve of the hips, again, begins high and looks very normal. This is so obviously a female because it has this female curve to the spine. It begins high up on the back and goes out as well. The shape of this posterior and these legs looks very female. This is an incredibly female body. There's no question that this is a female. Same thing here. That spine, you're not going to find a spine like that on a male. This curve in the spine allows females to be able to bear the weight of a child during pregnancy. It's what allows their back to not be injured and overburdened by the weight. Think of it kind of like a suspension bridge or something. You know, male backs can be straight and should be straight because that's actually better for the kind of work their bodies are designed for, but to carry a child within a body, it's better to have the curve to the spine paired with the wide pelvis and the female cue angle. It just takes the load off. Probably a lot of you did some kind of experiments in science, where you had a piece of paper and you put it maybe on two cups or something, and if you put a pen on that piece of paper, obviously it would just fall right down, right? Uh, but if you put the piece of paper and uh, bent it several times like a fan, then you found that it would be able to support the weight of the pen if you put it on top, right? So that's similar to having all these curves and angles in the female body. It means that maintaining a weight at the front of the female body is supported by these curving angles. You know, it's not quite the same thing, but I think you get the idea. And that's why we're not going to find these natural curves to the bones uh, that are for females on males, because the male body doesn't need that. In fact, it's better for the male body not to have that. When you see a ribcage that doesn't look huge, and you can tell the shape of the ribcage is normal, there's no ribs missing, then that just means it's a female ribcage. Female curve to the hips here, you can tell the bone of the hip is there as well. There's procedures that the male to female transgenders can have done where they will inject fat and contour the body, but it doesn't look right, it looks strange. The thing is, when it's a real female, you can still make out where the bone structure is underneath the natural female fat, and you can see that on this person here. You can see the markers of where the hip bones are, where you've got the thigh bones, because the fat hugs those things, and so you can tell it's normal female shapes. Now in these shots, this does look kind of weird to me, the behind. It's possible she could have just built up more muscle and it started to look like this, because I have seen some women from Africa and some Latinas who have a behind that looks kind of like that when they, are, when they build up muscle. Um, or it could be that these outfits, because they're all the same kind of jumpsuit outfit, could be that they intentionally squeeze her into this appearance, this shape. Or it could be uh, some kind of injections, because natural women can get Brazilian butt lifts and cosmetic procedures too. So if you see something that looks a bit odd, but the skeletal structure is still right, like it is here in all of these shots, if you see that the skeletal structure is still right, then you've got to think about, well, have they done some cosmetic procedures? It's possible. You know, think about the wardrobe, think about other options instead of just immediately jumping to... They're transgendered, because if they have the right skeletal structure, they're not transgendered. Again, the spine, you can see, all the time you can see she's got the right hip shape, she's got the right spine shape, it's definitely a female. The feet look like a proper female size, there's nothing large and strange about these feet, and again... Female looking thighs, female looking shape to the hips and everything, nothing strange here. Yeah, she's got a big mouth, that's not enough to say someone's transgendered, especially when considering their genetic heritage. Vertical, rounded forehead, no brow ridge, more kind of smaller, delicate female features, small ear, female chin to neck slope, indicating the greater level of subcutaneous body fat that women have, including around the face. You know, there's smoothness here, there's no jutting bones anywhere. Female smoothness, it's definitely a girl. I asked what I was talking about before with the uh, this shape looking different. I didn't do this, these are uh, circles, but I found this photo. Someone saw fit to circle the 
rear from before and the rear from later. So, you know, if you saw this picture, maybe you'd think it's suspicious because it's such an unnatural looking shape. But if you look at this, you can see that her natural shape or her previous shape may be before working out. I don't know what caused this here. But this shape on the left was very normal looking. So we can't just jump to conclusions with one photo either. Got to be careful and look at many photos. And I guess uh, they also saw fit to circle this hand symbol here, which I suppose is the devil horns. Um, but as I've said many times before, I don't think that all of these people are necessarily aware of what they're being used for. They may just be used for these agendas without being uh, consciously aware of what they are doing. So, you know, we can't read minds, but we can notice these symbols and perhaps she was told to do this by, you know, the project manager, a photographer, an agent, but maybe it was in her contract to do things like this, you know, I don't know. But it's still worth looking at and seeing that these symbols do pervade the music industry, the film industry. Yet another shot showing the female spine, more delicate looking joints, female curve to the face, no brow ridge, no sharp angles, no jutting bones, nothing strange in the neck, proper female curve coming in at a high point, the hips and the back, extremely bendy female spine, again, you won't find this on a man. There's the curve to the front of the abdomen as well, indicating that it's the pelvis that's tilted and not just a Brazilian butt lift sticking stuff on the back. It's clearly the actual skeletal shape. And again here, the smaller rib cage, narrow waist, wider hips. And you can tell here that there actually are all the ribs you need to have because you can see them. You can see the edge of them here. I've seen other pictures of people where there's something odd going on with the ribs and you can tell when there's a rib missing when you don't have the clothes on like this. These are extremely blurry photos, I'm sorry, but, you know, you can still make out. Index finger's longer than the ring finger, and again, there's variation in people, sometimes this doesn't count for anything, but if it has a female digit ratio, it is more likely to be female. Again, no considerable brow ridge, just a rounded kind of female forehead shape. Again, that digit ratio does look female, the face shape looks female, there's no jutting bones, looks female. Shape of the rib cage, shape of the hips, shape of the legs, the definite female cue angle, and proper curve to the thighs. Same things here. Also, the arms do appear to angle out from the shoulder. Female arms do this to accommodate for wider hips, whereas male arms typically hang straight down. And you can tell here that it does appear where the shoulder uh, joint is, is definitely narrower than where we've got the widest point where the thigh bone connects in with the pelvis. So with those fundamentally female dimensions, it's quite obviously female. No brow bones jutting out, no cheekbones jutting out, nothing strange about the jaw shape. Female softness around the jaw, nothing strange in the neck. And yet another shot of the bendy bendy spine, which is a female spine. Female energy in the eyes too. There's no aggressive fierceness to this person, it's just Kind of a gentle, inviting look in the eyes. Just another shot showing you that she's got a female cue angle, definite curve to the thighs. And once again, the female spinal arch. I've shown so many photos of this person showing that she has a female spinal arch. I'm sure I'm still going to get at least one person coming and telling me, no, it's a tranny, it's a tranny. Because that's what everyone loves to do in this scene, is say that anyone who's famous must be transgendered. That is the unproven doctrine of only trannies succeed, written by some guy on the internet, and not believed by me. Because what we've got to look at is the skeletal structure. People need to recognise that the skeletal structure is extremely important. If we can't agree that the skeleton doesn't change, then there is actually no foundation to any transvestigation videos at all. If people can't agree that the skeleton stays the same, then they can't ever prove that someone is transgendered. There's no way to prove it. Um, you know, people will say, oh no, but if they're famous, they're transgendered. That makes absolutely no sense. That's like saying that if someone's a lawyer, they're evil. Okay, maybe a bad example. But um, the thing is, we can't use external factors to decide if someone's body is transgendered. We have to look at the body. 
And uh, if you look at the FTMs that I've covered, and some other people have done some some good videos on FTMs too. Be careful though, because some people on here are stark raving mad. But uh, the the good videos on FTMs will show that the female skeleton cannot be prevented from developing into a female skeleton. Um, on FTMs, pretty much consistently you'll see the female Q angle, and you, you will always see that the hips are too wide as well. They'll always be too wide, and you'll see that female spinal arch as well. So if they can't stop that from developing on the FTMs, if they give them hormone blockers when they're children, and then they dose them up on testosterone, what it does is it changes the flesh. It allows them to build muscle. And it does, it does change the face a bit on, uh, on females. Testosterone will change the uh, development of some of the facial dimensions and bones and such, especially if it's given over a long period to young people. So that's why sometimes we see convincing FTMs. Um, but what it doesn't do is change the skeleton. And that's how we can always tell when someone is transgendered. It's the same thing with the MTFs. Why do we always see those those obvious tubular male bodies and straight male legs on MTFs if they can change the skeleton? It's because they cannot change the skeleton. They can change the flesh, and that's what they do. They give people silicon implants. They contour fat into certain regions like the posterior, the hips, the thighs. They, they remove ribs. They do other facial surgeries to shave down bones. You know, they do a lot of... Of surgery, they do a lot of cosmetic procedures on some of these people, but they cannot change the underlying skeletal structure of uh, the parts that are needed for walking and not being paralyzed. So they they can't change the spine, they can't change the hips, they can't change those things. And so I really hope people will be able to see the reason in that as the baseline value. We need to recognize that in transgendering people, they cannot change that skeletal structure. It's what people are stuck with. So we can recognize what they can do to the flesh to conceal it. Uh, you know, all their tricks, we can figure these things out. But this is actually a good thing. We can always tell that when they've got uh, this, the spine of a female, they're a female. They've got the spine of a male, they're a male. Also, a word of caution here, there are some females who don't have a very curved spine. So we do have to be careful about that one as well. And there are some males who have a uh, sway back or bad posture. So as with anything... There's no one rule that can be the rule, which is why I say we've got to look at several, several things, like the spine, the Q angle, the hips, the hip to shoulder ratio. It's important. But the thing is, those skeletal markers that are fundamentally uh, different between the genders, those are what we should be using. We can't be using the idea of, oh, if it's a famous person, it must be transgendered. That just doesn't make any sense. That is paranoid, illogical, and insane. I'm just going to say it straight up, that is insane. To evaluate the gender of a body, you have to look at the body. You can't look at what the body has done in its life. You can't look at what people say about the body and what awards the body has received. The body is what it is. So, when you see someone who has a female energy in the eyes, and all these female traits of the flesh, as well as the bones, it's just obviously a female person. So, even if she was famous, this person, Selena Quintanilla, was a real female. And that's that.